this one is called, um, our station is called the Images of Greatness. And I heard that you two are doing some reports right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are they calling it Images of Greatness and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Well, I call it that. But Good. It's just, they're <laughs> researching a famous American. Good. Who's your famous American? That's pretty famous. Well, there's another good one. Um, Jackie Cat Cochran. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, who's yours? Oh, I'll come back to you. Thomas <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson. Wow, that's pretty important. Jackie Robinson. Okay. Ted Williams. Oh, yeah. Walt Disney. Walt well, Disney. Entertainer. What do you have? Abigail got? Adams. Ooh. Amelia Earhart. Oh, and it's Ford. Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Sacagawea. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got a lot of politicians in this group, don't I? Presidents and politicians. But I had an inventor, I think Walt Disney, I would kind of count him as like kind of an inventor, right? Uh, what was another category? Oh, I had pilots. pilots. I had some athletes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 well, yeah. presidents. And presidents, right. Well, what, do you, what kind of jobs do you think they had in the 1820s? You think I had athletes? Were they famous out here? Yeah. No. Entertainers? Yeah. Pilots? Yeah. I never met one on a pilot, right? But I did have maybe explorers. I see someone who's an explorer with this group. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you were an explorer. That's good. I had have, I have presidents. I had politicians. Well, we have our famous images of greatness person, of course, is this person. Who do you think that is? Who do you think it is? Um, Colonel, uh, what's yeah, his name? I know. What's his name? person's going to be the same way. So when you go in and sit down, I kind of look it over because we're going to, I'm not going to quiz you, but when it's your turn to come up, you're going to tell us something about yourself. Stevenson's got, we've got a long list of kind of look at. But think about, well, what was your job? We, you, we know we said there weren't going to be any athletes, no entertainers. So we had other categories. We had politicians, we had explorers. Um, you know, we're, we're going to see, and you're going to see them on the mantle. I put all the names, I put all the um, kinds of occupations they had. And all of these people that I'm going to give you somehow kind of have some kind of a connection with Colonel Stevenson. Some directly. Some might have even walked through that door, knocked on the door. The servants would have come up. Let me see this. The servant would have come to the door and said, and they would have said, I'm here to see Colonel Stevenson. And they would have said, well, okay. Come right in. You're going to get two. And, um, and, and Colonel, Stevenson, Colonel Stevenson is in the parlor. That was kind of like his office. And he's going to greet you, okay? So when you come in, shake Stevenson's hand. And you can find a seat on the set table. There's some wooden <coughs> chairs in the back. And when you sit down now, you're not going to be visiting yet. You're going to be reading what's about your person. It's like a quick cram course on who your famous person is. Some of you may already know a little bit about them, right? Because they were kind of famous already. When you did your report, how did you find information about your person? Uh, internet. The oh, internet. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. What else do you want to say? Oh, books. Yeah. Books, yeah. books, right. Our people are not, some of our people are not quite that famous. Like Colonel Stevens, you think there's a book written about him? Yeah. <laughs> we have little paragraphs in history books about him. And so we had to do a lot of research to find out different things about it. Maybe sometimes like letters, people were really writing letters back then, back and forth. And so maybe yeah. we found a letter about them and it gave some kind of hint about what they were thinking. We even had things in the newspaper. The newspapers were very important back in the 1820s. Lots of information came from that. And so we could look back in old newspapers and somebody might have written something about Colonel Stevenson and we went, oh, he gave a big 4th of July party. He must have really been important in the town. Everybody came to his house on the 4th of July to celebrate. So then we find out some things about him. So line up one at a time, read it, and come on in. I'll have you sit down. James Time. 
something by Steve is to see all of the different kinds of jobs that are up on the mantle. Okay, so kind of be thinking about your person until you know, like, well, wonder what my person was. Was he a farmer or was he an explorer? What, how many different jobs? Stevenson, you start off, and I'm going to like point to each one of them because he's got a lot of them up here. Mm -hmm. Let's go first. He would, I don't, I'm this one I should have put up here. What is this? He was a sheriff. He was a sheriff. Sometimes that really is a politician back there in, in those days because he was kind of appointed the sheriff. So he was a sheriff down in Randolph County that's south of us. And then you can do this one because you just came from the militia. So let's see what else what he did. I was a major. Mm -hmm. And then you finally became a colonel. And then you got to be a representative to Congress. So now we've got we got politician and we've got soldier. We know he had a big farm out here, so he was also kind of a farmer. farmer. At least maybe he didn't even get out in the field. He had his servants go out there. How about this word? Uh, you know what that one is? Mercantile. And so tell me what that is in Mercantile. This was the second store in Edwardsville at the time. Okay, so that means now he's a merchant. merchant, right. Okay, and now let's see, here, this one. Helped to establish the first bank of Edwardsville in 1818. And so now he's a banker, right. And then um, let, we'll save that one for later when that person comes up here. Okay. So we've got a lot of different jobs, and now you can understand why it was really pretty important out here, right? Mm -hmm. Receiver of land grant monies, and so that means when you came out here to as a settler and you wanted some land, he had lots of maps in his possession so he could sit down and plot out where you were going to, what kind of, how many acres you wanted to buy. He would take a portion of that money and send the rest back to Washington, D.C. to the president. <gasps> The presidents. Do we have presidents out there? I do. They're in charge of the whole thing, right? Come here, presidents. Come on up. <coughs> Who's another president? I know I have another president. There they come. Mm -hmm. President, like president. I just have not yet. President. I'm going to have you come back later. Two presidents. Come here. No, you're right. You're fine. Let me see. Turn around so you can see. So they can see who you are. And who came first? Your president during that time. Your president during that time. So figure out who's in the first one. We've got George Washington, we've got yeah, Thomas George. Yeah, okay, so who are you? James Madison. Okay, and so what are you? The President of the United States from 1809 to 1817. Right, so when Stevenson is out here in the territory, you are his president during that time. You're also the president during what war? War of 1812. Right, and then this is pretty important too. Hail the father of the Constitution. Constitution. And this was your job to do this too. Appointed many of the early leaders of Illinois, such as Benjamin Stephen Stevenson, Stevenson Minnie and Edward, Edward Coles. Coles. Okay, so remember those. We already know Stevenson. Remember those last two names he said. Good job, James Madison, president during the War of 1812. Have a seat right here on the floor so I know what you're doing. Okay, next president after, Stevenson's still living out here in the, in the territory. Yep. Illinois is about to become a state, so who are you? I am James Monroe. Okay, and what were you? I was a soldier doing, during the Re Revolutionary War. Okay, so we got a soldier here. And I was the fifth president of the United States. So now he's a politician. <laughs> Those soldiers, they move up the ranks, don't they? Yeah, and I was considered the last president of the founding fathers of the United States. <coughs> Very good. So you're the president when Illinois becomes a state. All right, you can have a seat too. So now we were talking about these three people that you appointed to come out here and be somebody important, right? So that was Edward Coles and Ninian Edwards. Where are you? Come on up. All righty. You are really good pals with this guy, Ninian Edwards. Tell us something about Ninian Edwards. You guys are like best <coughs> friends. If he could have a BFF, this was Ninian Edwards. The only governor of the Illinois Territory from 1809 to 1818. The first U.S. 
Senator from Illinois from 1818 to 1824. Third Governor of State of Illinois from 1826 to 1830. Founding Let's put it this time. Served as an officer in the Kentucky and Illinois militias. militias. So you were a soldier too, and he was really a politician. I mean, you could, how many officers, how many offices can he have? First senator, first governor, the governor of the territory. And you have a house, you, you and um, um, Stevenson came up from Kaskaskia, from the south of in Illinois, um, and settled up here. And so he, you both probably had log cabins on there by Cahokia Creek. Stevenson came over here and built this beautiful brick home. And so you built one too, kind of over where St. Boniface is, kind of down in that part of, of Edwardsville too. And so your, your wives are good friends. You just had a lot in common. You probably had a lot of dinners together. You definitely, definitely would have walked through that door and sat down here in this room. Good job, Minnie and Edwards. Have a seat. So you really like that guy, don't you? You probably had a lot of good fun times with him. Okay, now, you kind of have an adversary here. You know what I mean by an adversary? You kind of disagreed on some things. That's a big thing. <laughs> Who are you? Edward Coles. Edward Coles. You, though, have a big plaque out there by the entrance to SIU. Um, there's a, a cemetery out there, Valley View, and then right in front of it, this is, have you ever seen this big brick wall in your picture, which kind of looks very much like that, is, is in a plaque out there. They've got some bushes, some nice, you have flowers around it, and it has a plaque be, for you alone because you were our second governor of the Right, you lived here in the city of Edwardsville. And before you um, were that, when you were out in Virginia, this is what you did. I served at private secretary President James Madison from 1810 to 18. Right, so you were his private secretary. All the presidents had a secretary. Um, and so you were really, you know, like you were the ear to when he's talking, right? You were like listening and hearing all these things. And as they're planning all of these things about the territory out here and then also about our country. But here's where you kind of deviated. You were this. This is called an abolitionist. Can you guys say that word? Abolitionist. It's kind of important. Here's what you did. Responsible for keeping Illinois a free state in the forming of the state constitution. Because this is what you did. Freeing all of his slaves when he came to Illinois. Right, you're from Virginia, like a lot of these people, all these famous people kind of came from the South, and they all had what? They owned slaves. But when you came across the Ohio River, now we're up here in a free territory, and so you did the right thing. You freed your slaves. You made sure they had some, some land that they could farm. You probably gave them a little money so they could get started. And so, and you made sure then that Illinois stayed a free state. Because Stevenson, he came from Virginia too, with his wife and his children. And you also brought along, what do you think? Slaves. You brought along your slaves. So when you crossed the Ohio River with Minnie and Edwards, who also had some slaves, by the way. So when you crossed the Ohio River, did you free your slaves? No. No, you saw the slaves' quarters over there in the kitchen, right? You saw those people that, they, but we called them instead indentured servants. It meant that you would free them eventually, maybe, maybe. You didn't have to, but maybe. Right. So that's how he kind of got around it. It was called an indentured servant. And so he still wanted them to be able to keep his slaves or servants because he needed them for this big farm to farm them right. But Cole said it's not morally right. That's not what we should be doing. And he kept telling that to James Madison. They were arguing all the time, too, falling back and forth. And so finally you left that position with the president, came out here and tried to set a good example for this for the state. Good job, Edward Cole. We appreciate that. Okay, have a seat. Yeah. Okay, so we have some early people. We have a we have these two governors. I got another governor of Illinois. Come on up. She wanted to come up with the president. She wasn't quite a president. <laughs> okay, who are you? Don't you love this first name? Yeah, and what were you? Right, so we became a state in 1818. You to be what? Yeah, so aren't you impressed that a lot of times the president, you never, have you ever gotten a letter from the president? <laughs> Anybody here got a letter from the president? Maybe you made fitness council or something, maybe you got a fine letter from President Obama or something. No, not even that. But, so can you imagine that 
you, they never got out here, but they were constantly sending letters back and forth and, and very official looking letters. And so um, that's pretty important when you think that Benjamin Stevenson probably had correspondence letters from our presidents here during his time out here because they were giving you instructions and directions. So this is Shadrach Bond. Bond. He was also a sol soldier and also a farmer and a politician. Good job. Look, I mean, really looks like a fancy soldier, doesn't he? Oh, no okay, have a seat. And let's get up. Um, let's see. Right. Let's have Thomas Kirkpatrick. We've been talking about this early town of Edwardsville. You probably would have come into the house too. What did What did you do? Um, I settled in the area that would become Edwardsville in 1805. And what did you do? I mean, you're the first one here, but we don't call ourselves Kirkpatrickville, do we? No, I named the town after Indian Edwards. Oh, that was really nice of you. You know what? Indian Edwards. You know, that's what you do. Indian Edwards. Yeah, here. Here he is, right there. Okay. Now, where did you live? Um, I lived in a one-room log cabin on the ridge above Cahokia Creek. And you guys know where Northside Dairy is down there? Yeah. 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 I used to well, like that's where Eversville first started was down there by Cahokia Creek because it has a direct link up to the Mississippi, up to the Mississippi River. And so we like we like to build our towns by riverways, don't we, or by waterways. Yeah. And so you had a log cabin there. You can that log cabin is still there, part of it in, inside one of the houses. It's kind of on the uh, east side of, of Main Street. You, they, there's a little you can see the street sign. It says Kirkpatrick Street or Avenue or something. Yeah, it's, the yeah, it's back there. But now here's what you did. You were quite the entrepreneur. Let's see. Let's go down here to this one. Um, I operated a sawmill on Cahokia Creek. And? I also operated a tavern and hotel out of my home. Right. So you are more kind of this merchant there that you you're, have some goods to sell because you're right there on the creek where there's going to be a lot of keelboats coming up and so people need to stay and have some refreshments, have a meal, have a place to stay. And so you provide that for them. Good job, Thomas Kirkpatrick. You can have a seat back. Okay, let's get um, the, you come up next. He looks extremely important. Look at this picture. You guys really did meet. Even though you're quite a bit old, you're not in the same era. You're many, you were here many years before um, Stevenson. Your name is Rene, this is very French, Rene Auguste Chouteau. You ever heard of Chouteau? We see in St. Louis, they say Chouteau. You're Chouteau, like Chouteau Avenue. Yes. You kind of don't have a very good French accent. What did what is your claim to fame? Guys on the floor? I was the founder of St. Louis. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that, does it? <laughs> okay, and who are you? I'm the stepson, I'm the stepson of Pierre Laclede. You've heard of Laclede's Landing, right? Okay, so this is the stepson. Of, right down by the riverfront, right where yeah. the arch is, Laclede Landing. You hear Laclede, Laclede Station Road over there. There's all kinds of Laclede Gap. I mean, that name is all over St. Louis. And you were just a lowly what? I was a fur trader. A fur trader. You came up as a 13-year-old with your stepfather hunting for those nice little fuzzy animals that are along the Mississippi what? River. Little, huh? Squirrel? Well, probably. I'd, probably, I'd say mink, beaver, some fancier ones, fox, all those good ones. So you were a fur trader, and you guys settled here along the river. And then what did you two do with, uh, with Stevenson? Benjamin Stevenson and I negotiated the Treaty of 1819 with the Kickapoo Indians. Wow. So there's even we even have some paintings and museums around the area that have you two looking pretty regal in your military attire. Probably you wore this outfit right there. And you would be shaking hands, uh, passing the peace pipe to the Kickapoo chief right. And uh, saying, unfortunately, get out of our territory, right? Move on, but we, you know, move over to further west because we have settlers coming in. Good job. All right, you can have a seat down. Okay, let's have you two guys come up. Let's see who we have. Oh, oh. we're gonna have you first. And now I have a okay, quickly. Who are you? Samuel Whiteside. Samuel Whiteside. What are you? I was an Illinois pioneer, and I landed in the Illinois militia mm -hmm. during what war? War of eighteen twelve. Right, and then what did you do? I was one of the signers of the treaty of eighteen fifteen with the Kickapoo and Osage tribes. Right, and so you would have known because you guys you were down more. Um, you had a settlement more down by uh, where we have Glen Harbin. But you would have been in the militia together and in, in trying to protect 
all their settlers here at the fort. And then you went off and fought in the Black Hawk Wars. Read this little part, because this is kind of interesting about you. General Samuel Whiteside commanded the Illinois militia during the Black Hawk War in 1830. Captain Abraham Lincoln was commissioned by Whiteside and led a company of Ernest Cummings. Right, did somebody in here do Abraham Lincoln? Um, yeah, so you had him under your command, Samuel Whiteside. That was your, you know, when he was not president, when he wasn't a senator, when he probably wasn't even much of a lawyer yet. He was in, in uh, fighting the Black Hawk Wars. Good job. Have a seat. And now we have a, oh, you definitely came through that front door. Who are you? Hooper Warren. Don't you love his name? Wait, what's Hooper, his name? Hooper, Hooper Warren. Hooper Warren. <laughs> what did you do, Hooper Warren? Lived in work as an agent for the lumber company of St. Louis. Okay, and then what is this? You know that one? I was a journalist. Very good. I moved to Evansville in 1819 where I published and edited the first newspaper in town, the Evansville Spectator, Spectator until 1826. And you were a? Abolitionist. Abolitionist. Abolitionist, that's our new word. You, you and Coles would have gotten along really well. So he's doing this newspaper. Are you impressed with the newspaper? Uh, eyes up here. Eyes up here. Eyes up here. Edwardsville. Yes. It even says, right, we have a copy of it. So it says, by Hooper Warren, published weekly. We get a weekly newspaper. And so you're an abolitionist. So you're probably writing articles in here about what about slavery? Um, trying to free. Trying to free, right. She's trying to free the slaves. So when you came to talk to Stevenson, what do you think you might have been kind of a dinner um, conversation you gave you two had? Yeah, so you probably had some pretty heated discussions right here, didn't you? But you know, when Stevenson passed away, we all bow our heads now. When Stevenson passed away, Hooper Warren, though, really put in his newspaper a very nice tribute to Stevenson. So even though you probably disagreed on a few things, you, you two really respect each other in your opinions and just wanted what was, be what was best, you thought, for the, for the territories that became a state. Good job, Hooper Warren. So now, when Hooper Warren leaves, we have Lippincott. Come on up, Lippincott. Here she is. You, I know for a fact, you probably stood right about here in this house. Look at what she, he, sorry. Look what, <laughs> look what he did uh, with Colonel Stevenson. You guys, you ready to listen for Lippincott? Because I bet you've never heard of this person before, have you? Okay, good. I was a frequent writer for the Edwardsville Spectator newspaper, and I later became the paper's editor. Yeah, so when um, who, when Warren left, right, then you became it. Now, what did you, what were you? A Presbyterian minister. So we have a writer and we have a minister. Those two occupations kind of went hand in hand a lot. Next one. I have a strong supporter to keep Illinois, Illinois free. Right, most of our ministers, that was their mission out here on the territory, that they were very much an abolitionist. They really did not believe, obviously, in slavery. So again, when you came here uh, to see Stevenson, you would have had some pretty heated uh, disagreements, wouldn't you? Yep. Uh, and we do this one. I served as a soldier during the war of 1812. Right, and because you were a minister, you would have gone the rounds on horseback to all the different um, towns around here, maybe to all and up to Greenville over here to Edwardsville. And so when Colonel Stevenson's daughter wanted to get married, guess who performed the ceremony? You did. So even though, again, you had this very strong disagreement about what was going on with the slaves, you um, you helped, you know, you, stood, you really probably stood right here, because they probably would have faced the fireplace, the harpsichord would have been playing music, and then when his daughter, when he came with his daughter down the steps probably, you would have farm the service pretty cool and you would have had other services in here because um they would have had church services in this room then too and so you would have been the one making a sermon right here <laughs> okay you can have a seat now here come my two for other people come up explorers and a famous person who never set foot in illinois but we're going to add him anyway how about that who do you have you set foot in illinois didn't you who do you have you do i know who are they so william clark I know, so when we say their two names together, we say we know what, who they are, Lewis and Clark, right? Yeah, so give me these. You don't need to read anything, do you? Who did, what did they do? 
they found, or they, oh, um, Tried to, like, they went across the United States and found a whole bunch of land. Yeah, they were the ones who explored our Louisiana territory. They went west. They went and so, way. you would, shh, guys, listen to because that was our bill. It's time to leave when we have to get through our famous person here. We had two really, really famous, we let save the famous ones for last, so to speak. So, we all know Lewis, Meriwether Lewis, and, um, William Clark, right? Mm -hmm. And they were just up the up the creek, so to speak, up Hopi <laughs> Creek, up by Wood River, up by Mississippi River, where they had their campment. And uh, it was before you were here, but Thomas uh, Kirkpatrick was probably in this area about the time that you were living here too, or having your camp before you set off to do exploring. And you, again, you never set footing along, but it was during this time of 1812. We talked a lot about militia today, right? And the War of 1812 and the Indians and all the signing of the treaties that we were doing with that, that was a big war. And so what did you, what was your claim to fame? You probably know before well, you, yeah. I made, you made the Star-Spangled Banner. He made the Star-Spangled Banner. Oh, what do you mean you made it? <laughs> he like wrote it. He wrote it as a what first? Song? It wasn't a song, it was first a what? Poem? It was first a poem, right. So he's out there in Chesapeake Bay looking at that the, wet, the flag flying over Fort McHenry, right? And all the bombs bursting in air, right? And so when he saw at the end, the flag was still there. Oh, I'm hearing some lyrics to the poem, aren't you? And you sing it for us. Good job. Okay, line up behind your teacher 